We use databases to store much of the data in our world. Flat file databases are simple databases that store information about uncomplicated things. The contacts in your phone, the birthdays of your friends, the list of computer games that you own. This is Bob, and he runs a sweet shop. His customers can choose confectionery from a large menu that is displayed in his shop. On his menu are five different categories of sweets, and there are several sweets in each category. So Bob could store all the sweets in a database. If we did this in a flat file database, it would look like this. As you can see, Bob's information about sweets is laid out in a table. In fact, another name for a group of records about one particular thing is a table. To make using the table easier, Bob has added a key field. A key is a name given to a special column in a database, where the values in the column can be used to identify particular records. Sometimes we can use a field that is already in our database as the key. But at other times, we have to add a new column to store the key field. Bob has added a column called Sweet ID to his database. In this case, the value of Sweet ID is a different number for every record in the database. This type of key, where each record has a unique value, is called a primary key. But there are some problems with Bob's database. People keep asking Bob what a caramel is, so he decides to change the category name to toffee. In this flat file database, the category caramel is stored four times, which means that Bob has to edit the database four times to make just this one small change. That's a bit annoying. There's another problem as well. Bob makes one sweet in the fudge category, his mint chocolate fudge, but it doesn't sell very well. So he decides to stop selling it and to make a different kind. If he deletes the record about mint chocolate fudge from his database, he will also delete the fudge category. Oops, that's not good. And there's one last problem. Bob has decided to offer a new category of sweet, candy. He wants to add the candy category to his database. But there's a problem. Because he hasn't made any candy, there's no sweet information to go into the database record. This means that he can't add the new category until he has made a suite in that category. Bob has an idea. Instead of storing everything in one table, he could use two. He could put the suites in one table and the categories in another. But how would he know which suite belonged to which category? If he added a key to the category table and also added the same key to the suites table, he could use the key values from one table to link to the other one. This is an example of linked tables. We can find which records are linked together by using the value of the shared key column. If Bob wants to know which category flumps belong to, he can find the record for flumps, read the value of the category ID, and then search the category table for the same value. This tells him the category he was looking for is marshmallow. The key columns with unique values in them, in this case, sweet ID in the sweet table and category ID in the category table are called primary keys. The category ID in the sweet table doesn't contain unique values. This special column 
is used to link the suite and category tables together. The category ID in the suite table is still a key column, but we call this type of key a foreign key. Linked tables are a feature of what we call relational databases. These are databases that are made up of two or more linked tables. Remember, a link isn't a magic piece of string. The link between two tables exists when they have foreign key and primary key values that are the same. It is these equal values that create the link.